For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Hello everybody out there. Uh, coming to you today to make another video. Um, it is August 8th, 2014. 8-8. Oh, I bet Enter the Stars will have some interesting videos today, right? For 8. Um, <laughs> he's on those 8 things. Um, okay, well, um, this is the title of the day. Um, today it's about not being easily offended and how um, we're really not supposed to be. And as Christians, um, we're supposed to kind of, you know, let things roll off of our back and um, and love everyone and, and kind of, you know, um, you know, I, I, I'm going to show you in Scripture how, it, you know, you're not supposed to be offended, um, but you are supposed to um, correct and help. All right. So let's start off with uh, this beautiful Psalms um, uh, 119, 165. Great peace have uh, they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Okay? Um, also, in, in speaking of the love part, 1 Corinthians 13, 5, uh, doeth not, um, it was speaking of love here, uh, doeth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Okay, and then also here in Ecclesiastes, I'm going to play this, Ecclesiastes 7, 19 through 21. Wisdom strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Also take no heed unto all words that are spoken, lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others. All this have I proved by wisdom. I said I will be wise, but it was far from me. Okay, so, see, um, don't, I mean, don't be offended even if someone is cursing you because, you know, you could have done that sometime in the past. So we're just supposed to let that kind of roll off of us. So we're not supposed to be e easily offended. This can also lead to other people being caught in sin because of you, okay? Because of you being offended by them you can lead them to a, a, a deeper sins um, and uh, vice versa, okay? If you're offended by someone, easy, and if they're offended by you, easy, it leads to deeper sins. It leads to sins like anger, wrath, uh, violence, hatred, okay? And so right here, I'm going to, um, in Matthew, this is how Jesus uh, speaks about it. In Matthew 17, um, 27, uh, the Jews Pharisees come up to him and they ask him if he pays um, Caesar's tax and he says uh, well they ask Peter and then Peter goes to ask him before Peter can even ask him he says um, yes let me ask well he says let me ask you a question Peter and then he asks him about the children of, of Caesar and children of God and all this are they exempt but then it's very interesting it's kind of like he didn't want he didn't really it's not a big deal to him to pay this money right um, uh, but he says this, which is very interesting, Matthew, because uh, he really doesn't feel like he should, is what it seems like, right? But this is what he says um, in verse 27, Not without standing, lest we should offend them. Go thee to the sea, and cast a hook, and take, and take up the fish that first cometh up, and when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that... Uh, that take and give unto them uh, for me and thee. Okay, so he's like... I don't really want to do this, you know, this is kind of, um, you know, beneath me in a way, I know what this money leads to, but as not to offend them, we'll go ahead and do it, right, because what would happen, they'd get offended by it, then they'd go tell Caesar, he'd get offended by it, which grew to greater and greater sin, which they were going to try to kill him anyway, but you know, this would just, it, it would just lead to greater and greater sin, you see that? Um, also in um, Matthew eleven six. Um, Jesus speaking, blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Okay, so he didn't want them to be offended in him, you know, by, by something like this, you know, because this, that, that's not why he came into the world, you know, to, to I mean, people were offended in him and, and, I mean, to the point to where they killed him, but not because he didn't want to pay a tax, you see. 
Um, um, so that's kind of the way um, we're supposed to be too. I mean, following Jesus' example. Um, also, here in Romans, I'm going to play this in Romans 14, 21 through 22. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And okay, so you see, um, it... it it's, I mean, it's really easy to understand. I mean, you can offend somebody by things that you're doing that you don't think are wrong. He, he's speaking here about um, eating and drinking, right? How can that be offensive? Well, to somebody, it can be. <laughs> and because that's offensive to them, then you, you've, you've sinned against them. And you've, you know what I mean? And so it's, you, you have to watch every little thing you do. But that's also why we don't need to be easily offended. Because if we are, then we, we're sinning in a way and we're causing other people to sin without them even knowing it. You see what I'm saying? By him eat, but this person just eating and drinking that caused another person to, to be offended. I mean, you've caused that person to sin. That doesn't make any sense, right? We're supposed to um, love and no matter what. And right up before that, he says the, um, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. You know, it says the, um, where is it? For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Okay, not being offended and not pointing your finger at everybody and telling them that they're wrong. See, um, we're supposed to be happy and, and loving and joyful. We are supposed to be strong and bold when those times come. But like in Corinthians, Paul was like, I hope that you don't make me bold to you like I am to some. You know, he didn't want to be that way. He'd rather be full of meekness and joy and peace and stuff like Jesus. Okay, um, um, here, in a, I'm going to play this real fast, in Ethesians 5, 11 through 14. And have... This is how we should deal with it. No fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Okay, so we are the light to shine in the darkness with love and peace and teaching. Um, because whatsoever doeth make manifest is light. So we're the light, Christ is shining through us. So Christ is the light, but he's shining through us, making us the light to, to these people in darkness. Now... Um, this is how you should handle it. It says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. You're not going to be buddy buddies with them. You're not going to be hanging around with them and, and all the time and stuff like that. You are to, um, um, but reprove them. You are to instruct them. Let them know with meekness and kindness and love, you know, what... God's feelings are on these matters, okay? And then um, let God know what his feel, what what their feelings are on the matters, and um, and do it with meekness and kindness and love. Um, um, oh, and without being uh, offenseful and without condemning, okay? We don't want to uh, condemn because that that's even worse. And Jesus did not do that. He did not. The the people, you know, the people that he were the hardest on in the whole gospels were the religious people. The religious people is what Jesus was harder on. All the people in the synagogues, which we could say the church today, those were the people that Jesus was hardest on. Everybody else out there, he didn't pass judgment on. He loved them and he helped them and he taught them, okay? And we're going to see that in John 8:11. I mean, a lot of people know this, you know, the um adulterous woman they and isn't it interesting that they bring the adulterous woman in to be stoned but where's the adulterous man who's committing this act they ain't bringing him in to be stoned so it, that's a double standard already that they're that, that that they're bringing in before jesus and jesus knows all this beforehand so you know the story like they bring him in they throw him down they say you know she's caught in adultery who should you know should we kill her and he said who is whatever without whatever who is without sin cast the first stone well he's the only one who could kill her because he's the only one without stone without sin so he's the only one who could have stoned her you see and but and he wasn't going to he wasn't going to kill her 
And um, so they all left. Now, here's what Jesus says to her. He says, um, where did they go, woman? And then she says, um, they're gone. And then this is John 8, 11. She said, uh, he says, who condemneth you? And John 11, 8 says, she said, no, man, uh, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Okay, so he didn't make her feel bad about what she did. He didn't, you know, offend her by the things that, that she did. He, he told her, he said, I don't condemn you for what you did, but it's better that you don't go and do this anymore. Okay, stop doing this, you know. And um, this, it's very interesting that the time that he, the other time that he says this, uh, go and sin no more, he says it to the man that he heals. But then the man goes and tells, you know, the Jews and stuff like, well, this man, he first he doesn't know who did it, who who healed him, and then he sees him later on and says, that's the man who healed me. And then later on, Jesus says to him, you know, um, it, it's good that you're healed but sin no more except in this, unless something else bad happens to you, right? So what he's saying is if you go and you keep sinning and you do wrong, then your life is going to be destructive and bad things are going to come about on you, you see? Okay, so we, so we are to expose the darkness, help them, teach them, but don't have anything to do with them. We're not buddy-buddy with them, and we're supposed to do it with meekness, kindness, not to offend and not condemning. Okay, um, and we're supposed to help them to be saved. That's the whole purpose of it. Okay, you don't play John um, 18 19. John 3 18 19. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Okay, so you see, um, it all has to do with exposing the darkness with, through the light that Jesus shines through us, you know. And we're supposed to do that with, with love. And to end it, and I'm trying to go fast because it's the tittle of the day and usually it's short, so I'm trying to run through it pretty fast. I guess maybe you could slow it down to listen, but uh, anyway, sorry. Um, Colossians 4, uh, to end it, Colossians 4, 6 says, Let your speech be without... Uh, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Okay, that's that's it right there. That's That kind of sums it all up, okay? Well, this is the tittle of the day. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. So just, you know, treat everybody good and love everybody and, and try not to offend. And definitely don't be easily offended, okay? Just let it go off of you because we have the peace of Jesus with us, okay? Wake and watch for Yeshua. God is love and I love God. Amen. Eat my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, Thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep.